The U.S. state of Tennessee has passed a new law banning geoengineering and chemtrail activities in the state. On March 18, 2024, the Senate voted 25 to 6 in favor of the bill, Senate Bill Number 2691, which was also approved by Congress on April 1, 2024, by 70 to 22 votes. The restrictive law, which punishes violations with a fine of 10,000 US dollars per day, will come into force July 1, 2024. This legal ban on geoengineering in Tennessee is a first important and courageous step proving that chemtrails are not just a conspiracy theory, because if there was no need for action, there would be no need for restrictive laws. Furthermore, the example of Tennessee shows that something can be done against a seemingly monstrous and unattainable superior force that unscrupulously manipulates the weather over people's heads as it pleases. As a rather small U.S. state, Tennessee, with its 109,151 square kilometers, is over 87 times smaller than the total area of the USA. It is approximately 400 miles long and only 100 miles wide. However, it borders on eight neighboring states. If they also follow the example of their courageous little neighbor, a band zone of 1.2 million square kilometers would already be reached. And it is precisely this process of state initiative that is underway in the USA. Minnesota, Pennsylvania and other U.S. states have also introduced similar laws to those in Tennessee to take action against supranational geoengineering. At the beginning of 2023, Mexico's Ministry of the Environment, in consultation with the country's Council for National Science and Technology, announced a ban on the release of chemical aerosol particles into the atmosphere after a U.S. startup company called Make Sunsets began its weather manipulation experiments without any permission and thus illegally on the Mexican peninsula of Baja California. Solar dimming projects, both large-scale and those in development, have now been officially prohibited in Mexico. The aim of the new policy is the protection of communities and the environment. The toxic nanoparticles of aerosols such as sulfur and aluminium oxide now must remain in the USA, where they would actually need to be disposed of properly and therefore expensively by the manufacturing industry. Doesn't this reveal an extensive environmental crime of international proportions that is truly manipulating the climate in the name of climate protection and illegally disposes of tons of toxic industrial waste in the process? And wouldn't this interesting development actually be a hot topic for European politics and leading media? So, while in the American hemisphere the topic of chemtrails and geoengineering has been discussed in public for quite some time now and has started to be combated legally, such actions hardly take place in Europe, especially in Germany. Here, the forced finance system media is obviously used to banning unwanted information and topics into the corner of conspiracy theorists in order to prevent any public discourse and justified criticism of certain measures. In the case of chemtrails and geoengineering, this happens almost like with a mantra. For example, T-Online after Tennessee's remarkable push forward wrote, A new example of what is possible in the USA, the state of Tennessee wants to ban chemtrails, it will be definitely a success because they don't even exist, claims T-Online author Simone Raphael. Even after the torrential rains of April 16, 2024, in the desert state of the United Arab Emirates, the local system media denied any connection to derailed weather manipulation, even though such practices had openly been admitted by the Saudis and the Emirates at first. Meanwhile, state press censorship also appears to have been hastily imposed in Dubai, the economic and tourist metropolis that was massively affected by the heavy rainfall. Because the National Center for Meteorology suddenly denied any connection it had previously openly admitted to the U.S. media company Bloomberg. 
according to the report, aircraft were used at seven intervals on April 14th and 15th to treat clouds over the desert with silver iodide. As a result of this approach, Dubai on April 16th experienced the heaviest rainfall since the beginning of weather recording 75 years ago. With around 150 liters of rain per square meter, it rained more in 24 hours than it usually does in the entire year. Numerous streets and the subway of this mega city were flooded, as was the airport due to the unusually heavy rainfall. The neighboring Oman also experienced massive floods resulting in deaths, including many children. The climate in Dubai is usually very dry. This is also confirmed by the weather data for the period from 1991 to 2020, with an annual average of 79.2 millimeters of rain, that is just under 80 liters per square meter. In the case of Dubai, should a thirsty metropolis with its rapidly growing demand for drinking and industrial water be helped through targeted geoengineering? Although the people involved apparently misjudged something here? A meticulous investigation of these anomalies would actually be the task of responsible politics and real journalism, which is almost impossible to find in the so-called quality media anymore. Instead, fact finders such as Wolf Rohwetter from Tagesschau.de, a news portal in Germany, claim that human weather manipulation such as cloud seeding played no role in Dubai. These are rumors and typical conspiracy ideology. This raises the question of whether journalists like Rohwetter thoroughly checked their own statements and did some research beforehand, or whether they are publishing claims that have no validity whatsoever. This would be a deliberate deception of the public and therefore constitute a criminal offense. Finally, let us return to the current example of Tennessee. Now that the new law has been successfully adopted, an effective criminal prosecution punishing violations in a targeted manner needs to be implemented. This presents both a challenge and an opportunity. After all, this could create completely new jobs. Accompanied by vigilant reporting through free media, more and more states could follow Tennessee's example and therefore achieve a nationwide ban on supranational geoengineering. Ultimately, there must also be a worldwide legal investigation into this international environmental crime, including compensation from those responsible for the countries and people affected.